bring you up to speed, Miller Coors wasn't a fan of the Bud Light ads that aired during the Super Bowl. To be clear, we brew Coors Light with corn syrup. So ah. it sued. On Friday, the court issued a decision, and both sides are claiming they won. Miller Coors said, We are pleased with today's ruling that it will force Anheuser-Busch to change or remove advertisements that were clearly designed to mislead American public. But Budweiser, they issued a whole press release that says, Yesterday's ruling is a victory for consumers as it allows Bud Light's Super Bowl advertising to continue. Well, who's really telling the truth? Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Frank, and this is Beer Esquire looking at beer and the law. The corn syrup attack came on the heels of several years where Miller has been trying to distinguish itself from the top-selling beer in the country by saying, Miller Lite has more taste and less calories, so... This advertising has always annoyed pendants because it should really be fewer calories, and saying more taste doesn't make sense because in a very real way, the reason that reviewers say that Miller Lite tastes better is it has less taste. It tastes completely neutral. But Miller's advertising obviously annoyed Anheuser-Busch, enough so that they decided to roll out this Super Bowl campaign attacking the number two and number four top-selling beers in the country. Never mind that they're actually losing most of their market share to Mexican lagers and craft beer. No, let's get these corn bastards. Miller Light uses corn syrup. How did people react to the ad? Well, in the first place, corn farmers were pissed. Okay, we feel food is a national security issue because of the quality that we provide. But in the beer industry, people weren't that impressed. For one thing, plenty of Anheuser products, including lots of stuff that's branded as Bud Light, uses corn syrup. And not just corn syrup, but in some cases high fructose corn syrup in the finished product. So it seemed a little bit hypocritical for Bud Light to take this stand. And craft brewers, who are sort of independent experts, were likewise unimpressed. Just as much junk as anybody, uh, as any of the other big brewers. And here's the bottom line. This is the, the head brewer of New Glarus explaining that the corn syrup actually doesn't wind up in the finished product. It's all fermented out. Corn syrup is fermented out. It's, it's yeah, that's basically... Right. Uh, um, it's, it's not that, it's not that they're adding corn syrup to the beer that's causing calories per se as sugar. It's fermented. So whether you use rice, corn grits, or wheat, or, or corn syrup, I think that you, you're going to have the same outcome, which is to dilute the flavor of the beer. So it turns out that using corn syrup or any kind of sugar has a purpose in brewing beer. It all ferments out, leaving a, a thin-bodied beverage with alcohol. Whereas if you were to use a whole bunch of malt, there are unfermentable dextrins in the malt that make the beer thicker in mouthfeel and maybe with a little bit of residual sweetness. Actually, American IPAs almost all use an adjunct a sugar in order to make them thinner, light-bodied, and yet pretty alcoholic. And the sugar that's used by a lot of American craft IPAs is dextrose, a.k.a. corn sugar, a.k.a. basically the solid form of the stuff that Boers and Miller are putting into their light beers, and, and for a very similar purpose, so that they have a very light-bodied beer. Uh, I mean, you could also argue, and it's undoubtedly true, that the reason they're using corn sugar as opposed to cane sugar or something else is because it's cheap. And yeah, it is. But the public doesn't know a lot about simple sugars or fermentation. Uh, the public seems to really not trust corn syrup. And they reacted strongly to this ad. They regarded it as one of the best ads in the Super Bowl. I mean, like, compare it to the ad Anheuser ran for Michelob Ultra, the ASMR ad. I, I don't even think anyone remembers that. I didn't remember it until I was preparing this video. Now, Miller Coors' initial reaction was to sort of laugh this off. Well, it was the first time we've been in a Super Bowl ad in about 20 years. So we haven't had our products in, in an ad, so we thank them for putting our products in starting the debate. That does Uh-huh. Yeah. And they also put out their own ads, correcting the record. Let's set the record straight. Miller Lite has great taste, only 96 calories. And but Miller no Coors marketing wasn't good enough. Sir. A month into it, Here. Fortune magazine said, Bud Light is dominating Miller Coors in the Corn Wars. And so, they sued. And they want Anheuser-Busch to not only halt the ads, but create a new campaign acknowledging their commercial was misleading. Miller Coors filed suit in the Western District of Wisconsin, which is Miller's home court, basically. It's in Madison, Wisconsin. And they had two counts in their complaint, both based on the Lanham Act. 
Uh, the first, the more serious one, is for false advertising. And they also had a claim for trademark dilution, which I'm not going to get into here because it wasn't part of their motion for preliminary injunction. And that's the key point here. The motion for preliminary injunction, that's what the court decided Friday. You know, what a preliminary injunction is, is basically you're asking the court for relief before reaching a final decision on the merits. The relief here is the thing that Miller Coors is seeking from the court. That is, they want an injunction, which is an order from the court saying that you, Anheuser-Busch, can't keep doing this. And specifically what they want is an injunction saying you can't keep using these ads you can't keep saying 100% less corn syrup than Coors Light and Miller Light. And to get a preliminary injunction, you have to show that you have a likelihood of success on the merits. That is that it's more likely than not that you're going to win the underlying case and that you have no adequate remedy at law and that without relief, you will suffer irreparable harm. And even if the court makes all of these determinations, it then has to consider what it's called the balance of hardships. That is, whether by the court entering an order prohibiting Budweiser from doing whatever, that would cause more hardship on Miller Coors if they don't enter the order than if they let Anheuser-Busch continue advertising the way they were. And in the Seventh Circuit, they have what they call a sliding scale, uh, Seventh Circuit being the appellate court over the Western District of Wisconsin. And the sliding scale is the more likely that the plaintiff is going to win the underlying suit, uh, the, the less concerned you have to be about the balance of hardship against the defendant. Because if they're almost certainly going to win, then, you know, screw that defendant. They should be enjoined. So a preliminary injunction is kind of like a, a mini expedition trial that the parties brief really quickly. Um, they try to put the facts together on who is likely to succeed on the merits. And to succeed in a deceptive advertising case under the Lanham Act, you have to show that the defendant made a materially false statement of fact in a commercial advertising, that the false statement actually deceived or had the tendency to deceive a, a substantial part of the target audience of consumers, and that the plaintiff has been or is likely to be injured as a result of the false statement. The court's order on Friday focused almost entirely on the first part of this analysis, whether there was a false statement under Seventh Circuit law. And the party submitted some very expensive, very lengthy, dueling expert reports about whether consumers were uh, actually misled by the advertising. And the court sort of skimmed all of this and said, well, yeah, yeah there it looks like there could be some evidence here. Miller Coors' complaint itself contained some evidence in the form of tweets, people on Twitter that were complaining. I often wonder if random people know when courts are citing their tweets, like, hey, Turban Guy 43, hey, MAGA Cheers, did you know that the court is quoting your tweets? It's like the ultimate subtweet, right? Anyway, back to the law. False statement is a little bit broader than what you might think. It could include situations where a statement is literally true, but it's misleading and almost everybody gets the wrong impression from it. And this is, uh, this is what Miller Coors argued this advertising was like. They said that everyone that saw this advertising, they were going to think that by corn syrup, they meant high fructose corn syrup, which it does not contain, and that therefore all of the statements are all false whenever they're referring to corn syrup. And this was a calculated move by Anheuser-Busch to confuse consumers. And Miller Coors also argued as a, as a backstop precedent from other circuits that found that when an advertiser knows that this advertising is going to deceive consumers, that you can just infer the first element of the Lanham uh, false advertising claim. But the court didn't go for that. And the court also didn't go for the theory that consumers were always confused about high fructose corn syrup. So in a couple of important ways, uh, Miller Coors was not that successful on this motion, in spite of a lot of reporting I've seen that sort of treats it as a, as a Miller Coors victory. It's a very modest victory because the court looked at the different advertising claims in detail, and it separated them into four different categories. The first category is statements that Miller Light, Coors Light are made with, brewed with, or use corn syrup. And this was kind of the most important claim. It's in the original Super Bowl ad. It's in almost all of Anheuser-Busch's Bud Light ads about corn syrup. And the court found that it was literally true. Uh, it is made with, it is brewed with 
corn syrup. It's also true that all the corn syrup is consumed, but it's true that it's made with it. And so the court didn't find that this statement was false. Now, Miller, of course, had tried to say that, well, even if it's not literally false, it's creating that false impression on consumers that it's uh, high fructose corn syrup, which is incorrect, or that it's uh, sort of demonizing corn syrup. And it cited to a precedent in the Seventh Circuit where a court found that there was a Lanham Act claim against a company that was advertising cheese made with no weird stuff or ingredients you can't pronounce and in particular no milk from cows treated with rbst and uh it sounds like a pretty good precedent for miller cores because in that case it was literally true that the the cheese advertised didn't have those ingredients but the district court said well this precedent is different because in that case They were specifically demonizing these ingredients by depicting them as a cartoon monster with uh, sharp razor horns and electric fur. And here they're just being all cutesy. Hey, Miller Coors, it's made with corn syrup. Just telling you. So the court said on its face, it's it's neutral. And for that reason, uh, it refused to extend the precedent and said that that this particular claim is, is not false and is not likely to prevail on the merits. And that means that the original one minute long commercial on the Super Bowl is untouched because none of the other three uh, statements that the court singled out for analysis are contained in there. Only the the claim. To be clear, we brew Coors Light with corn syrup. Ah. Now, Miller Coors did score some wins here because on the next two issues, uh, the idea that Bud Light has 100 percent less corn syrup or the idea that corn syrup is not on the ingredients for Bud Light, whereas it is with Miller Light and Coors Light. Those statements are misleading because like we discussed earlier with the brewers, all of the corn syrup is consumed. It's all eaten up by the yeast. There's nothing left. So in a real way, none of them have any corn syrup. I guess maybe you'd say it's a little bit like saying marinara sauce has 100% less alcohol than vodka sauce. Uh, The court singled out a couple of ads that specifically had these problems. There was one that, that ran during the Academy Awards called Thespians. Miller Light is made with barley, water, hops, hop extract, and corn syrup. Bud Light is made with barley, rice, water, hops, and no corn syrup. And they had a bunch of other ads that were very similar to this. And even though the court didn't single them out, it looks like they've all been taken off of YouTube. So I think that Anheuser is is taking a cautious position that any of these ingredients list ads are off the air. And the other ad that the court singled out is one where the Bud Light King says, People want to know what ingredients are in their beer. And again, that's a problem because it's it's very easy for people to misunderstand what ingredients are in beer. Uh, the court itself said it's not exactly clear what it is because beer is not a simple recipe where you throw everything in and then it's a finished product. It's it's changed. It's The chemistry is altered by the yeast that does violence against simple sugar and, and, and farts out alcohol. And finally, the court considered the uh, less expensive claim. Um, there aren't actually a lot of good examples of this. Probably the best one is this weird uh, advertising that they found somewhere, probably made by a distributor that sort of tries to thread the needle and say, oh yeah, corn is fine. We love corn at Anheuser. We just use it for our low-end beers. Ah, like Miller Light and Coors Light. Uh, the court found that it was a bridge too far to conclude at this point that there was a likelihood of success on that. So the end result is a couple of the more obscure Bud Light commercials are going to be enjoined, meaning that it would be against the court's order, that the court could find it in contempt if they continue to run these ads. And like I said, they've already taken them all off of YouTube. But the main thrust of the ad campaign, it's still in place, along with the original one minute long ad, which is why after the decision was announced, Anheuser said, we're running new ads this weekend. So what's next? Well, the parties can appeal this preliminary injunction order. I don't think, however, that Anheuser is going to because their most popular ad is in the clear. I think, if anything, it's more likely that Miller Coors would appeal. And whether there's an appeal or not, there's going to be another preliminary injunction hearing in this case, and that's because the court flagged something. But like packages say no corn syrup, and 
As you recall, 100% less corn syrup is one of those claims that the court found was, in fact, misleading. There's a good reason to think that this might come out differently, though, and that's because it's not singling out Miller and Coors Light as containing corn syrup, supposedly. Uh, actually, Bud Light's best defense here might be that, you know, some of these Limerita mixes that they actually do contain corn syrup. And so putting that on the Bud Light package isn't saying anything false or misleading about Miller Coors. It's it's a commentary on these artificially post-fermentation sweetened beverages. And that would be kind of ironic if that was their uh, defense. Courts ask for briefing on the box issue within 10 days from now. And if there's an appeal by Miller Coors or anybody, that'll come 30 days after the original ruling. So in about three more weeks. Anyways, if you like this video or would like to see similar content like it, do hit subscribe. And if I make more videos, maybe you'll find out about them. Thanks.